Hey Spuddies, Potatomic Whiskey here and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization 6. Now today we're going to be playing some single player again. And we're going to be playing a completely new game. Uh, we finished off playing with the scenario. I might go back and do a Cleopatra deity run, maybe on after this series. We'll see. I think I'm more or less done with that scenario. Let's have a look here. I think what I want to do is Norway got buffed this patch from what I remember Harold Hadrada um, he used to be he used to have this these different things I can't remember what they are now but now his bonuses are he allows coastal raiding for all naval melee units and he gets plus 50% production towards all naval melee units he also gets the NAR which he also gets NAR which is units have the ability to enter ocean tiles after researching the shipbuilding technology and naval melee units heal in neutral territory and units ignore additional movement costs from embarking and disembarking. So we might do a sort of island hopping campaign. We might, you know, try to push things in our favor and go for a domination victory as Norway. Uh, they also get the Berserker, which is a Norwegian unique medieval area unit. It has four movement if it starts in enemy territory and has plus seven combat strength when attacking and minus seven combat strength when defending. Now, the Norwegian unique ancient era naval unit that replaces the galley is a Viking longship. It can pillage enemy coastlines and capture civilians if it's adjacent using its coastal raiding ability. It has four movement while in coastal waters. And they also get the Stave Church, which is a unique building for Norway. It is a replacement for the temple, I think. I could be wrong. But holy sites get additional adjacency bonuses from woods and plus one production for each coastal resource tile in the city. So I'm thinking Norway, if we're going to be playing Norway, I'm thinking we're going to want to be playing for a very aggressive um, naval campaign with a little bit of other stuff in it. I think we might go like military into religion, that sort of pathway. I'll have to pick up at least one campus probably in my capital. But otherwise, we'll be getting stuff like encampments. We'll be getting stuff like harbors and what are those other things? You know, the ones that the uh, harbors, encampments, holy sites. And yeah, and that's about it. And maybe a couple of commerce hubs to pay for the army. But yeah, so this, this is the sort of thing we're going to go for. We are going to be playing on Didi. And we are also going to be starting in the ancient era. Uh, I'm going to do a standard game speed. I think I don't really like the standard speed I would like to do quick but we'll do standard I, I suppose I should get, get used to playing on standard uh, we will do I could do island plates I could do fractal let's do island plates it seems like a fun little game to play uh, I'm gonna do standard resource ah you know what we could do sparse let's do abundant that sounds like fun we'll do abundant resources we'll have a standard everything else um, we'll leave all the victory conditions on, although I would like to turn off religious victory because it actually it, it makes the AI less spammy in the religion sector. And the AI can never win a religious victory anyway. So the only ever reason to have this turned on is if you're going for a religious victory, in my opinion. Uh, there's no duplicate leaders. All this stuff is great. And there we go. That's it. That's the setup. So we're going to be playing Norway. We're going to be playing on Deity, Ancient Era, with a standards game speed with nine city-states, five other players on a small map with abundant resources. And religious victory disabled other than that it's gonna be all the one so I'll see you guys in the actual gameplay episode bye bye <laughs> 